class 17. They're just booking through this semester. Wow, it's going fast. Um, so I want to continue on with uh, chapter 5. And this is Brittle stale, Static Failure and Introduction to Fracture Mechanics. Um, okay, so we're covering um, brittle materials, um, specifically the brittle Coulomb Moore with just a mention of the modified Moore. Um, selection of failure criteria, but selectin. Selectin? That's my Tennessee roots. Um, and then we're going to introduce stress intensity factor and fracture toughness as concepts for uh, fracture uh, introduction to fracture mechanics, which is a, a, a large field and we're just going to barely taste it a little bit. So here you go. Um, in chapter or section 5 8, we have the maximum normal stress theory for brittle materials. And that says this is the non-failure zone. The, 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 really the distinction for the brittle materials is that the strength and tension for a lot of brittle materials is different uh, than in compression, the compression being the larger. Now, I think of this in some respects, not always, but you know, I'm, I'm not really much of a material scientist. But the, think about how things fail on the, like the granular level, right? On the, going down to the grains. And we have slip planes and they're slipping off of each other. And, um, and that happens in tension, right? They're, they're pulling the thing apart, right? And as you're pulling, you're kind of slipping off here. But but sometimes the compression, it will, you know, that that, that slipping isn't necessarily going to occur as easily as it will if from the tension. That's one way, perhaps, of looking at it. Also, I think of uh, so, some of the examples where the tension and compression are different are for materials. One is very common is cast iron. Cast iron is stronger in compression than is in tension. Well, think about why that might be. Um, for one thing, cast iron isn't exactly homogeneous, right? It, it's got different uh, inclusions and stuff in it uh, because of the process of making a cast iron. It, it could have iron and, and, uh, inclusions, right? Or carbon conclusions, I can't remember. But anyway, it, um, it, it's not completely homogeneous. So there, and there, you could even think of there being like little voids I inside the thing. And so when so so we, we when we start to pull the thing, we start to pull the material apart, right? Those are great places for cracks to open up. But if you're trying to crush it instead, you're pushing it. You're really like just pushing these things closer together. And unless maybe the voids collapse, like a cave collapsing or something like that, it's it's not they're not really is going to be a, a, as big of a factor. And I think of the same way as concrete, right? Concrete is very definitely. A, um, stronger in compression and barely has any strength and tension um, when, when used in a you know I'm not a civil engineer they do a lot more reinforced concrete but you need steel reinforcement really in your concrete to really handle any amount of tension it's really the steel that's inside the thing that's going to handle the tension you don't want the you don't want the concrete to handle the, the tension um, so that's like the idea, right? That just get those kinds of concepts, you could, uh, my thought process when trying to remember or, or try to imagine uh, why you would have be stronger in compression than you were in tension. But when it comes to the um, failure loci right here, if we didn't, uh, you know, if we did the same type of treatment um, that we had in maximum shear stress theory and distortion energy theory for ductile, uh, we would you know, in the beginning, we do the maximum normal stress theory, right? Um, but now it's, uh, uh, so here's the maximum normal stress theory for brittle materials, and this isn't very good. So this is like information only. It's not one that we should use because what we find is we do have failures, as you see over here, that occur inside the box when you make it a square. So we have to cut off the corners. Um, so the, the two ones where we cut off the corners, let's erase this right here, are the brittle Coulomb more and that you could just think of that just as this direct second cousin to the maximum shear stress theory you'll see the Coulomb more right there goes from right here to right here we just draw a straight line just like we did with the maximum shear stress theory but we could improve upon this if we note that if instead we make a square right here for the tension and then from 
where that square would be, that's where we cut off um, things. So we, that would be the modified more, right? So we have the brittle coulomb more and the modified more. I'm just gonna stick with the brittle coulomb more. It's a little bit more cautious, no pun intended. Um, modified more is uh, perhaps uh, uh, more accurate, right? Um, and uh, uh, but uh, so 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 th these are things uh, uh, to consider, right? Uh, that they are, you, and this is gra gray cast iron data. And by the way, when we look up cast iron, we can look it up in the back of Shigley, and we can find that it has uh, uh, compression strength and tension strength. All right, so here are the equations maybe that we might want to use. And it's one of the reasons why I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with the brittle coulomb more is when we, when we go to find the safety factor right here, it's just a little bit easier to uh, digest. If you wanna go for the modified more, here's the safety factor uh, that you would need to use. And that's only down in this quadrant right here, by the way. Um, the, other, the other quadrants are quite uh, uh, easy to deal with right there that's uh, uh, this is the uh, this is the first quadrant right over here here's the third uh, here's the third quadrant right here right the third one down here when it's uh, when, when it's completely in compression uh, type of thing but it's only when you have that partially compression partially tension in your principal stresses that you have to worry about it and even noteworthy um, when we're, we're dealing with uh, um, he, here is the tensile strength right here, right? There's the tensile strength. And if you had pure um, shear, if you have a situation where you have pure shear uh, or pure torque, yeah, pure shear, tor torsional shear, that's the 45 degrees right there. So re recognize um, that you, you, you know, the conditions that you have to place you have to, to, to be changed in your modified more has to be below that line. All right, so let's just do some examples. And find it based on the modified more and the um, uh, yeah do it on the modified but by the uh, brittle coulomb more and the modified more so here you go here is ASTM 30 uh, cast iron and so one of our first tasks is to look up the material properties in our textbook and that's going to be table oh I got to have it memorized a22. That's what I'm saying. A22, yes. Table A22 for some. Uh, nope, nope, I lied. I did not have it memorized. That was bad. There you go. Table A24. Ah, gray cast iron. And that problem says we're going to use a ASTM 30. That's this guy right here. Wow, that thing's really jumping around, isn't it? Um, which has a tensile strength. You. SUT of 31. They're named for it. They're very close to being this, but you should use the correct value. But that usually says that's the tensile strength. Okay. And then 109, right? So it's more than three times as strong. Boy, I really did not like the um, the focus right there. <laughs> it was jump the focusing. Zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out. All right. Um, so let's see. What we want to do here first is um, it's got zero shear. Okay, it makes it an easy one, right? So let's draw. When we have any of these situations, it's like a good idea to like kind of write the thing down, right? So there's compression right there. So here's your 50 ksi, and here's your 15 ksi. So if we were to draw a more circle of this thing right here, first off, uh, we'd have 15 right here, and then we would have 50 right over here, right? Negative 50 right there and a 15. So here's our big more circle. And then you'd have zero is gonna be one of them. And so here's your other two more circles. Well, that was terrible. Wow. I have made fun of uh, uh, more circles that were better drawn than that. Anyway, something along those lines, right? Trying to improve my circles. There you go. 
didn't matter. But anyway, I did it anyway. So the equations that we want to use uh, for this uh, to find uh, the uh, modified Mohr, right? So first off, uh, what we want to find uh, to use the modified Mohr, uh, the brittle Coulomb Mohr, excuse me. Let me find, where did, where did this go? Where did I do that? Did I just move them somewhere? Where did I just move them to? Yeah. Did I just toss those pages? Is that what happened? Where did those pages go? I'm losing my mind. What a great, what a great video. Wow. You really know how to make videos. Where did that um, page go? Right in here. Oh, I see. Whatever. Okay. It was right here. All right. So, uh, first off, this is the uh, thing that we're going to use because we know that we have. We're in bet this is greater than zero. This is less than zero. So, here's the safety factor uh, that we're going to find. I didn't leave myself a lot of room to work. Um, so, we have one over the uh, brittle, the, the safety factor of brittle Coulomb more. Right? This is the equation that I'm using, one over this right here. So we go B, C, M. And that's going to be equal to sigma A divided by the tension minus sigma B divided by the compression. And that minus is there because this is compression, right? So don't subtract these. Just note that this is a negative value, so they put the negative value here. The big idea, right, the big idea is that we're using apples to apples. This is, the, this is a tension. That's a tension strength. This is compression. That's compression strength. Makes sense, right? So that you say, all right, so it's going to be 15 divided by 31, the strength we just looked up, minus, but here's our minus 50 divided by 109. Right? From that, you get a brittle Coulomb more of 1.06. Okay. Hmm. Now, if you do the same, if we apply the modified more here, first off, uh, we have to decide whether we, we either uh, we, we use this guy right here if we're below this line right here. So th this is a line right there of where we have a ratio of one to one, right? So it, we, if, the, if the ratio of B to A is uh, uh, less than one, we just go ahead and take A and divide the tensile strength by that, right? Oh, I'm, excuse me, the other way around. This, they're showing the safety factor there. I don't know why they're not showing it this way right here. This is what I would say right there. Why, why aren't they showing it that way? I don't know. But this is what we would do for our safety factor if we're there. But if we are instead, we are in this quadrant over here and we're below this line right here, Therefore, then we are going to use this uglier, longer equation, which is really just a curve fit, right? Not a curve fit. It's just a, a linear thing right there, right? So um, we note that sigma b divided by sigma a, um, absolute value of the thing, is going to be negative 50 over 15. Therefore, oops, it comes up to 3.33, and therefore, this is less than, I mean, greater than 1, right? That's the idea here. Um, so now instead, we use the 1 over n modified more, which looks like the ultimate in compression minus the ultimate in tension times sigma a divided by the ultimate in compression times the ultimate in tension minus sigma b over ultimate compression. If we do that, we get 1.24, right? So we had two different um, answers here. So, but let's take a look at that graphically. And then we'll probably not do the modified more anymore. Why are we doing the modified more? I don't know. Where did my ruler go? I don't know. He just decided to disappear. He took a vacation somewhere. 
there you go. All right. So um, on the setup of this thing, it looks to me like I made my axes right here and right here. And I used my increments of making this 20. And did I do that right? That 20. So um, here's my somewhere near 31. Here's my somewhere near 31 right there. So, oh, boom. And then um, that's the same thing going to be true here. Here's my 20 and 20. Here's 31 right there, and here's like 31. So uh, we'll continue that. Time. But now we have, we need 109, right? So here's 20, 40, 60, 90, and then 100, and then 109 is somewhere down in here. And I need to make a better line than that. That's just sad. I guess, I don't know why I'm rushing. But uh, here's 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 60, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Here's are like 109 thereabouts, right? And I guess we can make a box down to the side, but that's this box doesn't really matter quite as much as, and that, that was pretty lazy with that line as well. But um, here is our brittle Coulomb line. And this one does matter, so maybe we just take a little bit extra time with it right there. Um, but if instead we want our brittle, our, our, our uh, modified more, I'm going to take it to right there. Right, so here is our, I'll do it as a quasi dash line here. And of course, this one doesn't really matter, it's the one in the other quadrant. This is just for looks, for symmetry, because this is the one that we actually use. Um, and so coming down to right there, right? so here, dash, 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 and dash, 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 dash. And now we're going to plot these two things out of 50 and 15. So um, 50, right here is 20, 40, 50 is like right there, right? So that's our that's where our sigma a is uh, going to be. And then for 15, right? So let me see, what did I count by? There's one, two, three, four, five. So these must be by fours, right? So there's four, eight. 12, 16, right there, right? So right here is where, no, no, it's a little closer over there. It's closer to right over there. So if, it, if here's 50 right here, you can kind of see how close this thing is getting, right? Hmm. Yeah, it's right on there. Hmm. I'm looking at my uh, little piece right here. Yeah, I didn't do a great job with my graph right here. So I'm gonna say that my thing is like right there and 50 is like right in here. I really should be a little bit more careful. So I'm saying this right there is where I'm saying my point is. And so I'm gonna take and draw my line down like that. And so I'm going to call this O, and maybe I'm going to call this A, and I'm going to call, no, not, that's not A. Yeah, no, that's A. This is B, and then this is C. Right in there, right? So um, looking at this uh, closely, I'm going to say that my OA is 
right over here somewhere. OA is approximately going to be, um, I said it was 45 before. Uh, it looks pretty, uh, okay, I'll go with 45 millimeters, sure. And then um, going to OB, I said that was like close to 48. That looked like 48 to me, so OB, 48 millimeters. And then OC, that looked like it's 55 or 50, I said 54 before, let's see. Um, one, two, three, four. Actually, it looks like 56 to me. I might have been a little lazy. Hmm. Let's see 56 this time. Let's see how far off I get. OC. So graphically, with my uh, brittle Coulomb more, that should be um, OB, because this is the brittle Coulomb more line right here over OA, or 48 over 45, and it should be approximately, right? Yeah, 48 and 45, and I get 1.07, which is what I have up above right there, right? I'm just uh, doing uh, that right there. Um, and then uh, for the modified more, should be OC over OA, or my 56 over 45, and 56 and 45, I get 1.244444. So even though I was not really very pencil, I was being kind of sloppy because I'm tired. I didn't eat lunch yet, it's 1241, I need to lunch. That's why, that's what I'm blaming on. I got uh, pretty close to um, this, you know, just showing graphically. So this is this is the idea right here. That's, um, and I think by having the failure loci, that's just some of the reason why we introduced it in maximum shear stress theory and distortion energy theory, was to get kind of like this compare and contrast about what these things are doing. Right? They were saying that this, the failure loci is sort of like the, the, the boundaries of where safe is. All right, so there you go. That was longer than I meant it to be, but well, 22 minutes.